Good evening, guests and fellow Toastmasters. A warm welcome to meeting number 44 of the Cabbies Online Toastmaster Club. I'm Toastmaster Bimpi Kumari, your Sergeant at Arms for today's meeting. As Sergeant at Arms, it's my duty to highlight some key points for the meeting. First, the meeting is blocked for two hours and also urging you to stay for the entire duration to get the maximum benefits of it. Second, your video should be on, your audio should be off. Also, unmute yourself when you are called to speak or need to speak. Third, Regarding the topics of sex, religion, and politics, even though Toastmaster International doesn't put any restriction on speaking on these topics, at the Gabby's Toastmaster, we request all speakers, role takers to be mindful and responsible and abstain from expressing any controversial views on these sensitive topics. Also urge you to be cognizant of the fact that we as a club practice diversity and inclusion in letter and spirit, hence ensuring there is no sexist, racist, or any such, uh, such undertones that create hostility and discomfort for the members or guests. Let me call upon the presiding officer for today's meeting. She is working as a senior data analyst. She is a certified image consultant and personal branding coach. She is also the president of the Gabby's Toastmaster Club. Heartiest welcome to distinguished Toastmaster Nancy Goel. Please join me in giving her a round of applause as I pass the virtual stage over to you, DTM Nancy Goel. Thank you so much, Toastmaster Bimpi, Bimpi Kumari, our Sergeant at Arms. May we have a round of applause for our Sergeant at Arms? Yes. How many of you heard this two minute, three minute uh, speech by our Sergeant at Arms? One, anyone, nobody else? Two, okay, Chitu Puneet. When she mentioned that there shouldn't be any sexist or racist comments, we practice diversity and inclusion in letter and in spirit. That's true. That's true. And with the same thought in mind, we are having today's theme as inclusion. I will be holding on to my comments on my uh, opinions on inclusion any further because uh, that's our Toastmaster of the day who's going to take it further on the theme. However, I would take this opportunity to open this meeting on this note that yes, we all are here practicing diversity and inclusion. Meeting number 44 of the Gabby's Online Toastmasters Club. I would like to invite our guest to quickly, to quickly um, give a 30 second intro. intro where I would expect you to share which club you are from and how you heard about Gabby's if you're not a Toastmaster already. A little bit about you otherwise as well. May I request, uh, I'll start with the role takers today. Uh, may I request Toastmaster Kishin? Toastmaster Kishin, a quick 30 second intro. Yes, uh, good evening everyone. I'm Kishan Jayatilaka. I recently joined uh, Sunday Live Speaker Forum, Sri Lanka. Uh, I joined that club uh, last month. So this is my, I think, uh, fourth meeting. Uh, I did the icebreaker and I did uh, our counter. This is my second role as a timer. That's all. Thank you. I am, a, I am an engineer. Lovely. Lovely to know you. Know about you, Toastmaster Kishin. Welcome to the Gabby's Online Toastmasters Club. Yes, uh, he's joining all the way from Sri Lanka for all of you who don't know it yet. Thank you so much. I'll move on to Toastmaster Minakshi, Minakshi Mishra. Toastmaster Minakshi, a quick 30 second intro about yourself. Hi everyone, hope you all can see me. I am Minakshi Mishra and uh, 
I'm president of uh, CGI uh, Elite Speakers Forum Toastmasters Club uh, in Bangalore, and uh, I'm a geoscientist by profession. And yeah, today I'll be uh, I'm joining this meeting as a uh, grammarian. That's all from my side. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Toastmaster Menakshi. Welcome to the club. Thank you so much for joining us as grammarian today. I'll move on to our guest, Sagar, Sagar Dugul. A quick 30 second introduction. All right. Hi, everyone. My name is Sagar. Uh, I'm an ex Toastmaster. I was a part of this beautiful fraternity for long five years. I was, I was a part of Toastmaster Club of Speaking and Leadership. And today I'm joining uh, almost two years after. Uh, so I'm planning to have a good time here. Thank you so much for making me the part of this wonderful family and looking forward for the wonderful meeting. Thank you. Thank you so much, Sagar. We look forward to having you as Toastmaster real soon as and when you are ready. Welcome back to Toastmasters meetings. I see Gitika turning on her camera with her beautiful smile. Toastmaster Gitika. Gitika, you a Toastmaster or guest? Maybe I'm mistaken. I'm a guest. <laughs> okay. Quick 30 yeah. second introduction. Sure. So I'm a chartered accountant by profession, a budding soft skills and trainer and image consultant pursuing my course. I've just started with a journey. I heard about Gabby's through one of my soft skills training uh, cohort member. Um, so yeah, I think this is my first ever experience or first ever meeting with the Gabby's Toastmaster being the first when I've joined Gabby's I'm joining this for the third time as a guest third time yeah and that's my first experience with Toastmasters and I'm thoroughly enjoying it I had a word with Smriti a few days back and she did tell me what a wonderful <laughs> uh, thing this Toastmaster is and how it can help so I'm so looking forward to all the beautiful experiences and I'm a DI DEI enthusiast so inclusion is a topic so close to my heart so it's really Looking forward to the entire view. Thank you. Thank you so much, Gitika. Looking forward to having you as Toastmaster real soon. You would be surprised to know all many of us in the Gabbies are from ICBI and IMPA. So you'll yeah, find that, that is so exciting to hear. I mean, I already feel connected <laughs> by virtue of that. Yeah. The connection is mutual. <laughs> Great. All right. I see guest Toastmaster Anand. Uh, I think I, I should stop calling you as guest uh, Toastmaster Anand. A quick 30 second yes. introduction. Yeah, I am Toastmaster Anand. I am from Madras Toastmasters Club. I enrolled myself as a Toastmaster to leverage to improve my competency in professionalism. Really, uh, after enrolling myself in Toastmasters, uh, my communication skills and leadership, leadership skills has improved a lot. That is the uh, only thing I have seen in that. I'm, my heartfelt thanks to Gabby's Toastmasters Club to enhance my communication skills. It is a catalyst, I can say. Over to you, ma'am. Thank you so much, uh, Toastmaster Anand. It's always a pleasure to have you in our meetings. Next, I see Varun Varun Kumar. Hey, hi. My name is Varun and I am the president for the Director of Masters Club. We are a part of District 126 and I am the club coach. I have been a club coach, club mentor and club sponsor along with area director for District 6. That being said, I have been in Toastmasters since the last seven years and still counting. And that's my talk. Uh, over to you, Madam Toastmaster. Thank you, Toastmaster Varun. For sharing a little bit about yourself. We hope you have a wonderful time in today's meeting. I see a couple more guests. Um, Anusha, Surya, I'll quickly have their intros. Uh, Surya? Okay, looks like Surya is not on audio. Anusha, over to you. Yeah, hi, I'm an ex Toastmaster and I'm into training basically. So I enjoy doing that as a passion and as a hobby. Lovely. So you're joining us today as a guest. Yeah, I'm joining as a guest. Master. All right. Hope you have a wonderful experience. I Thank moved you. on to guest introductions. Any further? 
we will take rest of the introductions uh, towards later part of the meeting during the break time. Uh, I'll leave it on. I'll leave it to the uh, Toastmaster of the day to take it further from here in the interest of time. I would like to quickly, quickly, quickly pass on the baton, baton to the Toastmaster of the day who is going to talk about inclusion. Our Toastmaster of the day is um, somebody who has recently joined the Gabby's Toastmasters Club. He's a dedicated individual with a decade-long tenure at Amazon as his first and only professional home where he's found comfort in familiarity. I can already see a smile on his face where he is already mentioning that, yes, this is where he finds comfort. Probably he'll say the Gabby's is uh, his comfort home in a couple more months. Despite his contentment, he's not the one to shy away from adventures and that's where he joined Gabby's taking up the Toastmaster of the Day role. With this, I pass on this baton to Toastmaster Manikandan Varadraj. Please put your hands together for our Toastmaster of the Day, Manikandan Varadraj. Thank you so much. Uh, thanks for that wonderful introduction. So maybe it's not the first time hearing it out, maybe when preferring office is calling out, it's very uh, good to hear it out. So before I'm gonna start uh, with my introductions and then what is going to be the theme. So I'm gonna show you something quickly. I believe it is visible to everyone. Just have a look into it. Is it clear? Can someone confirm me? Is it clear for everyone, this small poster? Uh, if you can move, uh, if you can move it a bit upwards. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Now we can see it clear. Okay. Just have a quick glance at it. I will just quickly go through it. Just there are four individual pictures, which is very equal to each other. There is a title also mentioned below. Just have a quick glance at it. Okay. Maybe uh, for quick with interest of time. The first one, which is equality, you can see three individuals who have a different, uh, uh, maybe the physical aspect also different to each other. They are just standing on a box, wooden box, and then one of two of the individuals not able to see the game, right? That means equality is nothing about you giving an equal resource. The resource is nothing about the three boxes. We gave it to the three individuals, irrespective, only one person can able to see just because of physical there's a difference between the three people, right? When it comes to equality, right? So you are giving an equal resource in terms of your understanding the people different to each other. You're providing the resource equally to each other, like in terms of one person getting two box, one person getting one box so that people can see it. That's equality, right? The third element, which is justice, where you're removing the complete fence, right? And then all the three people can able to see the game all together. The finally, which is our topic, which is inclusion, we are going to invite them to play the game together, right? So that's a quick introduction or maybe the way of introducing like how inclusion is important, right? Maybe at workplace or at, uh, at, uh, at home, right? So having said that, our topic for today is being inclusive at work and also at home. So, hello Toastmasters and dear guest, my name is Maniganan Varadaraj, working with Amazon as an HR business partner for past 12 years. Uh, I joined Toastmaster to, like in the month of April, first week of April, and then uh, I'm in the journey of developing my leadership, leadership skills, right? That's where I am. So, getting back to the uh, topic, right? I will quickly give an anecdotal feedback of my own experience of having an inclusive mindset. So uh, I usually I'll take my personal example, so it is always easy to relate uh, things. So uh, during my one of the, uh, uh, like three years back, I believe, I met a person called Alan uh, in Vinod. First time when I met Alan, he was wearing a, a vibrant maxi dress uh, for everyone's clarity. Maxi dress, it's a long gown uh, where people used to wear. So initially, it made me feel awkward or maybe I felt hesitant to have an engagement with him because of the dress, uh, because the gender is different where the dress is completely different. I was just 
very uh, bit estate to talk to her, talk to him. But so unconsciously, what I started doing that is I've started excluding him in my discussion with others. However, Alan included me in my discussion uh, with him. Then I realized one uh, one interesting fact, right? How inclusive is most important thing. Then I questioned my own bias. Okay, Mel say I I made myself aware that Alan prefer or maybe Alan pronounce as she or her, right? That's how my mindset I learned from one of the individual in my life, right? So that's quickly about the theme for today. Uh, let me get back to our business of what is the DNA for today's meeting. So for the benefit of the guest, I would explain what is the structure of today's meeting. So we'll have three sections, one prepared speech sections, where speakers will have practiced, crafted their own speech to improve their public speaking and also the leadership skills. Second section, which will be a topics, uh, table topic section, which is uh, in proactive speaking, where the speakers will be given opportunity to speak on certain topics. The topic will be given by the uh, Toastmaster, uh, 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 table topic master. The final section, which is evaluation section, which is very crucial part of the meeting, where members will receive a constructive feedback from the respective evaluator, right? So the first three uh, sections will go one by one. Before we start with the prepared speech, uh, I would call upon uh, General Director DTM Saurav Datta. Uh, Saurav Datta is a two times DTM award and has 10 uh, pathway completing Toastmaster. He has been a president, distinguished division director and a distinguished area director in the past. Also Toastmaster Saurav has played a several leadership role in Fortune 500 companies in startups and also in non-profit organization. So currently Saurav is building his own edutech startup and which is founded in June 2020. I'm sorry for the introduction because it's a, a line of achievement what Saurav have done. So I really need to make a note of it because it's a long uh, laundry list. So I just made a note of it. Yeah. So I'm just handing over the virtual uh, uh, stage to DTM Saurav. Thank you so much, Toastmaster of the Day, Toastmaster Manikandan. And uh, let me quickly explain the general evaluator's role uh, in any Toastmaster meeting. So as you heard that uh, Toastmasters International, including the Gabbies, is a platform for us to be inclusive. Inclusive means that we are uh, we don't filter out anyone based on their inability to do something. We include everyone in terms of the speeches, the evaluations, uh, in terms of table topic participation. But inclusion is meaningless if you are not improving through that inclusion, right? So just being a fly on the wall or just being a part of the group and continuing to repeat the same mistake again and again does not really add value. Hence at Toastmasters, we have something which we call is an evaluation. So every single role in a Toastmasters meeting, the speaker's role, the evaluator's role, or any other role for that matter, is evaluated. And the job of evaluating every role taker, the meeting as a whole, from the beginning of the meeting till the end of the meeting, is on me as the general evaluator for today's meeting. And as you would understand, evaluating a two-hour meeting uh, is not an easy job and it cannot be done properly if I am doing it alone. Hence, I've got a team who will work with me for doing this. So this team has got four members. We call them the Taggle team. The first member on the team is a timer. A timer for today is Toastmaster Kishan Jayatilake. Toastmaster Kishan Jayatilake has pursued his passion for engineering at the Faculty of Engineering, University of Rohana, and successfully graduated in 2014. After graduation, he embarked on his professional journey with KIK Lanka Private Limited, where he has had the privilege to contribute to his skills and expertise since 2014. Outside of work, he is passionate about cinema, drawn to artistry and storytelling. Additionally, he has a deep appreciation for music, finding relaxation and inspiration through various genres of music. I also learned just now that he is a Toastmaster of Sunday Live Speakers Toastmasters Club, the club where I am the club coach. So um, thank you so much, Toastmaster Kishan, for taking up the timer role today. And 
can you please explain your role to the members and the guests in today's meeting? You are on mute, Kishan. Sorry, sorry for that. Thank you very much, General Yuruveta, for your wonderful introduction about me. Uh, dear Toastmasters guest, good evening. I will be the time of this meeting. I will time uh, keynote speech, table topics speeches, and evaluation speech of the keynote speech. And I will also alert every each speakers of the uh, time yeah, using green color and yellow color and red color, which indicates a specific time remaining. Uh, when I talk about uh, keynote speech today, she's uh, having 18 to 22 minutes and she has uh, 30 seconds grace periods for lower end and upper end. So I will show green color at 18 minutes, yellow color will be shown at 20 minutes, red color will be shown 22 minutes. Right? Then when we talk about table topic speech, table topic spe speakers are having one to two minutes and 30 second grace periods for low end. I will show green card at one minute. Yellow card will be shown one and a half minutes. Red card will be shown at two minutes. And when we talk about uh, evaluation, evaluator speech, they, he is having two minutes, two to three minutes. And uh, he has, 30 second grace periods for low end and upper end. I will show green color at two minutes. Yellow color will be shown at two and a half minutes. Red color will be shown at three minutes. So that's all. I will be present my report called when called upon the during the meeting. Over to you, General. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, uh, Toastmaster Kishan. And are you taking this role for the first time, Kishan? Yes, this is the first time I am taking this role. Okay, thank you so much because I already see the seriousness with which you are doing this role. I'm already impressed. Though I'll have to hold on to my father's comments about your role toward till the end of the meeting, but I just can't stop myself from appreciating the seriousness with which you explain the roles. Good job. Thank you so much. Okay, so let me move on to the next member of my team, which is our R counter. Our R counter for today is also a new Toastmaster. Toastmaster Ritu Sukale. Toastmaster Ritu Sukale is from Mumbai. She comes with a remarkable experience of eight years in the BPO industry and four years in the edutech industry with numerous rewards and recognitions. Her major role in her work is to help students with the right education, enriching through her counseling, proficiency, and she has managed to successfully enroll 10,000 plus students in the various curriculum that she is driving. She is currently a public speaking expert with Planet Spark, a, a student of Image Consulting Business Institute. She loves interacting with children, teaching, cooking, gardening, and parting. Over to you, Toastmaster Ritu Sukale, to please explain your role for the benefit of the members and the guests. Yeah, thank you so much, Saurav. Uh, thank you, Toastmasters of the day. Am I audible? Am I audible to all? Yes, you are loud and clear. Okay. okay. The purpose of uh, the purpose of our counter is to listen and make note of unnecessary words and sounds used by all the speakers and role players of the today's meeting. This report will focus on five major areas. The first is filler words such as "are." Mm, oh. Inappropriate intersections, for instance, like and, well, but, so, you know. Third is 
the use of crunch words similarly to basically, actually, this thing, etc. Repetitive words or phrases in the form of I, uh, this means, this means, and all of that. Unintentionally long and short pauses made by the speakers, I'll be observing that. I will also present the rest of my report after the end of the, uh, the meeting, once the general evaluator uh, session is completed. So over to you, Toastmaster, for the day. Sort of over to you. Okay, thank you so much, Ritu. Um, that that would be the general evaluator. You're doing this role for the first time, Ritu, right? Yes. Okay, lovely. So after the first time timer, we have got the first time our counter. A lot of debuts happening today. I'm really, I'm already getting excited about this meeting now. Okay, so the third person in my team today is not a new Toastmaster though. She is quite an experienced Toastmaster. It is Toastmaster Minakshi Mishra. A geoscientist by profession, healer by passion, and a mother of an eight-year-old little princess. She's in Toastmasters since July 2022. She just loves being around kids and playing with them. Over to you, Toastmaster Minakshi, to please explain your role and also introduce us to the ward of the day. Thank you, General Evaluator Toastmaster Sora. Uh, so. Uh, Mr. Toastmaster, fellow Toastmasters and guests, as a grammarian, it's my responsibility to play, pay close attention to all the speakers, listening carefully to their language, the usage of the language, and I'll take a note of any misuse of the English language, as well as any outstanding words, quotes, or phrases used. And as a grammarian, it is also my duty to introduce the word of the day, so for today's uh, meeting, the word of the day is palpable. Palpable, uh, the meaning of the word uh, palpable is obvious and notable. And some of the uh, usage of palpable word uh, is like uh, the tension in the room was palpable during the exam. Or maybe the tension in the courtroom was palpable as the jury foreman stood to announce the verdict. Palpable can also, uh, palpable is a kind of synonym of tangible to describe something that can be perceived by one's sense of touch. But for this meeting, maybe uh, you all can use it uh, as obvious and notable. And uh, yeah, just give me a minute. So this is the word of the day and I'll encourage everyone to use the word of the day. And uh, I'll give a word of the day report and grammatical usage report when called upon during the meeting. Uh, thank you, Mr. Toastmaster. Over to you. Thank you so much, Menakshi. I'm already feeling that we are going to have a palpable learning experience today. Thank you for giving a very interesting word of the day. And with this, let me now invite the, the fourth member of my tagging team, which is our listener. Our listener today is Toastmaster Shrilakshmi Hegre. She is a charter member of the Gabby's Toastmasters Club and the charter officer of the Gabby's Toastmasters Club, the oldest of the three Gabby's clubs. Shrilakshmi is a certified image consultant and soft skills trainer by profession. Her interest in public speaking and leadership skills made her join Toastmasters. She is a double, triple crown winner at Toastmaster and a double pathbreaker. She is the founder of Imaginative Image Consulting Services. Over to you, Sri Lakshmi, to explain your role. Thank you very much, DTM Sarodata. To be a good communicator, we need to be a good listener also. As a listener, I make note of some interesting questions. I hope everyone are listening uh, to, to everyone in the meeting. At the end, we'll come to know how well we all are listening to everyone in the meeting. Over to you, DTM Sarodata. Thank you so much, uh, Toastmaster Sri Lakshmi. So that is my Taggle team, Toastmasters and guests. There is a timer who will watch the time. There's an R counter who will watch your trips. Uh, if you're tripping during your speeches, there is, an, uh, there is a grammarian who will be watching the usage of grammar and the usage of the word of the day. And there's a listener who would be watching whether you're listening or not. And then I will be back with my Taggle team to present my report towards the end of the meeting. Over to the Toastmaster today. 
thank you uh, general director sorogata and the staggle team uh, looking forward for the evaluation section so now we will start with the section 1 which is the prepared speech uh, our speaker for today is uh, toastmaster sudharma uh, she is getting evaluated by uh, toastmaster lakshmi uh, lakshmi please confirm your availability yes i am present here thank you uh so the speaker uh, toastmaster sudharma who is adapting our l5 project to and the objective of the speech practice and present a longer speech timer please note it is 18 to 22 minutes yeah uh sudharma stay in sri lanka and is a fellow chartered accountant she is interested in learning new things getting to know new people and traveling to new places like me Uh, Sudarma is a uh, vice president education of Gabby Online Toastmaster Club. So uh, I'm I'm extremely sorry, Lakshmi. Uh, I'm not able to get your introduction. So so I'll just uh, do it later. So right now I'm inviting Toastmaster Sudarma, and our title is Minimalism, Minimalism Sudarma. Thank you, Toastmaster of the day. Good evening, dear Toastmasters, visiting Toastmasters and guests. Can I ask a question first? Are there any minimalists in this room? Can I see hand raising? So, medium sound of Toastmaster for it. Okay. Then I have another question. What is minimalism from your point of view? Toastmaster, Pony. Oh, if you want to spend something, there are three things: uh, need, luxury, and comfortable. And I always choose need. If there is a need, then only I will buy it. Otherwise, I don't. Uh, I will focus only on the things which are in need. Yeah, that's my definition of uh, minimalist. Thank you, Toastmaster, Pony. Medium sound. So minimalism for me is where you can. express yourself with one letter you don't need to use one whole paragraph when you can um, go to work in a bicycle you don't need to buy a rolls royce that's minimalism for me thank you ddm saurav then again another minimalist is here who is that any guesses other than house master punit and ddm saurav how guesses yes. Nancy, Medium Nancy. Okay, I I think Medium Nancy. I don't know. I think it's Toastmaster Noor. Yes, it's Toastmaster Noor. Toastmaster Noor. I can see Toastmaster Noor in the middle, but I want to say <laughs> that is me. <laughs> I am I am a minimalist. Okay, I thought you will <laughs> guess me as a minimalist. It's okay. you can guess toastmaster noor i will come to you later with regards to minimalism okay let me share my screen with regards to the minimalism okay me share screen hope you can see my screen okay minimalism it's a art of living that means live with peace of mind and live the way we, we want thus harm to the nature people and animal it is not said by me it is said by dr roshan who is a specialist doctor and you can find him in channel raw youtube channel i recently follow his videos and i got to know lot of knowledge minimalism means a concept and we can think about it as a with attributes if you can follow at least one attribute you can be called as a minimalist then if you think you have to reduce your usage of things and the way you are talking or behaving it's a part of the minimalism only if you can follow one thing in minimalism concept you will be called as as i said earlier minimalism minimalist then how do we decide what are the rules of minimalism there are no rules 
there are no frame works. You can decide what you want. That concept different from what we know. That means that lifestyle is different from what we know. We can adjust it our own way. If you can decide one part to be minimalized and you can use it. Right? And it can be have advantages also. In minimalism, there are three types. Any guesses? What are the three types we can use minimalism? There are three attributes in minimalism. We can use that in different ways. Three types. Toastmaster Puni, are there any comments? Mm, sorry, come again. There are three things that we can adapt that minimalism. Three ways. Yeah, we can use that minimalism. Okay. I'm not getting at this moment. I think. Uh... Mm, if, one, if, if someone speaks, then I will share my comments. Okay, okay. It is physical thing and relationships and mindset. When we come to physical things, you all will have an idea. What are the physical things? Can you give me some comments? What are the physical things we can apply minimalism? Just thinking, you have to allow me like a minute or two. Meanwhile, others can step in too. Because sometimes the topic, you know, we just go around. So just thinking about a okay. solution. Toastmaster Meenakshi has raised hand. Yes, Toastmaster Meenakshi. What are the uh, difficulties? Is it related to materialistic things like minimum num minimum clothes, minimum uh, 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 kind of food variety, uh, minimum uh, uh, things at home? Something like that? Yes, yes, yes. Physical, physical things means physical everything. Yes. yes. Foods, clothes, what we wear clothes, and what are the items we use? That means electric items, what are the transportation methods? That means cars, vans, buses, all the things under physical things. Then that physical things, what we want to use is decided by our own selves. Toastmaster Hirakshmi has raised hand. Do you have any suggestion for physical things? Yeah, we should be healthy. We should our hand, our hand and like we'll be fit enough to do whatever we want. That is very primary. We should our health is very important in physical things. For me. Yes, yes, yes. Health also very vital thing in our day-to-day -day life. Physical things means physical items we are using. If we think this laptop, it is a physical thing. We can think what kind of laptop we are using? Apple laptop, Samsung, or Dell? That is the different type of categories. That decision will be based on our own self. There are some trends in our society, our world, in our country. There are different types. If we are going to adjust our needs, our wants, according to that trends, it will be dependent on ourselves. It is our choice. If we compare our trends in those days, we here had a lot of songs. You can also recall that I also am in a song by our greatest artist, but I can't hear it anymore. It is a trend that time. We had single songs like flower songs. Every flower name has a song. We can hear it, but not these days. That is all are hearing that songs very frequent. What about transport methods? We had some bikes, Dio, Honda. Now these days, no one is using new item like bike. That days I can remind a lot of people use same bike mode. If you ask from that person, why you are using this, this kind of product? If you see, are there any new dress code? I can see some people they are in the same clothes to the office also because it is a trend. If you ask from that person, he or she will not have a reason. Why? They are following group method. But minimalist will decide, is that accomplish my own need? Need means what? Need means our basic things. If we want to eat, if we want to drink, that is a need. We can decide what is the want. If we can drink water or tea. 
or milk. It is our decision. But when it's compared to trends, people tend to use their trends as their needs. If you ask from that person, they will not have a reason. But if you ask from a minimalist, he or she will have a reason because that person will decide that is a need or not. Why? That trends will depend on the current environment, but minimalist will not respond to that one. He or she will analyze it. Then only she, she or he will decide. It is based on the wisdom level that it was it, a country where people have less or average wisdom level, they will follow all the trends. Even if it's a bad or good one. If there is a wise person, he will not, he or she will not try to imitate that trend. If he or she will think it is a good or bad. It, we can't tell trends are bad because trends are not bad all the time, not good all the time. There are sev several trends, they are, can be good. Then we can follow it. But trend creators should think about it. We can follow if you think it is good or bad. For example, last year when I joined my main company, my colleague was an online, online business woman. Every person in my office buying every item because she is updating WhatsApp status status but i am not following what's some status and i am not i don't have any keen of buying it but i saw some uh, produce blender and i bought river then i was thinking whether i should buy it or not then i make a quick analysis yeah if i go to salon it will be 300 or 500 for eyebrow trimming then what what i should i do i am not going to salon no weekend then i decided not to buy but this year, I calculate again. Because of fluctuation, it has gone to 500. Then I made a quick calculation. It will be only 950. Then I bought it. Because it is a need to me. Now I can use and I cover it. I can cover that cost by two times. Then it will be an advantage to me. That is the thing about physical thing. If you go to a supermarket, if you buy all the things, but you feel it is good or bad, it is your own decision. We can't say anything about it. But if you decide what you want to buy in hand and go to shop and shop and buy the things, that is your own decision. It will depend on person to person. You can adapt it or not. Then, again, next is relationship. Relationships are depend on Physical thing, relationship, mind plus practice. Friends, I told earlier, relationship. We can use minimalism to relationship also. We have to consider four aspects. That is, what is my personality? What is the other person's personality? And what is the impact of third party? And what is the environment I am within? If you come to my personality, if I am introvert or extrovert, it will be decided by myself, whether I like to associate new more people or not. It will give, give me a strength or it will diminish my strength. Then should I associate more people or no? If it gives me a lot of encouragement and happiness, I will definitely decide to have more and more networks. Then it's come to other person's personality. If I am associating that person and it will give me a benefit or positive environment, it is okay to have that relationship. But it will give harm in future, then we can decide whether we should have that relationship or not. Third part, if there is a harm to my family, my neighborhood or my country because of that relation, relationship, I can decide whether I should maintain that relationship or not. What is fourth one? Environment. Environment means my professional life or my job. For example, last month I got an offer from my friend insurance person. He has won million, million dollar round. How many of you have heard that million dollar round? I don't know, 
that is the maximum point they can go. Then he asked me, would you like to do online insurance? He asked for me 30th uh, March and 31st March. Then I thought, I told, no, no, it is not my passion. I am a chartered accountant. I can't do that thing. I think it is not my passion. Then I, again, I got to know we can have a referral. Then I told Tushita, to I will do that one. I will, I will refer. Then I was very curious whether I can do it or not. Then I sent few people these policies. Some replied, some didn't reply. Then I decided, this is not working. I will give up. Then I gave up because I have a network, but I don't like to use that network to my own benefit. I want to help and I want to get some advisors, but I don't want to sell my network to that insurance policy. That is my point of view. Then, if you like, if you are like a marketing person, if you are like a salesperson, you have to have that relationship. It's based on your requirement. You can decide what 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 way you can use that relationship. It is based on our own choice. Ultimately, that minimalism concept is based on your own choice. Next one, mindset. Mindset is we can practice minimalism in our mindset. How are there any comments? I see those my Sri Lakshmi is eagerly listening. What what is your idea? How we can practice minimalism in it's me. Uh, yeah, why but, uh, many people think that I need to earn a lot of money, but that's not uh, that's not according to me. That's not uh, the, too that's too much. People uh, should have that that how much is sufficient for them? That for them for their two fifty kids uh, security this much is sufficient. Many people think that if I uh, many people have mindset that if I invest a lot of money, it will be my life will be uh, successful. My life will be purposefully fulfilled. That's definitely not true. Kids will get spoiled if parents make and uh, parents make money and uh, save it for their kids. Only think only money is sufficient is sufficient for kids' education and for their financial uh, on the and their for some future security. That is minimalism. Some people have wrong perception about money. Thank you, Rosemary. Relax me, Rosemary. Money can do. Yeah, uh, Pudarma, I, I just have a my experience of having that mindset uh, during that couple of months before. Uh, this mindset, having that minimalism mindset, it's not very easy. It will take time for that. Uh, so I had my phase of going through the minimalism. Uh, when I able to implement that in my lifestyle, that it started reflecting my uh, way of thinking. For instance, uh, when I travel, uh, I don't stay in a fancy place or uh, I don't want to eat in a fancy restaurant. If I find something have a quality and set of people is available, I'll go for it. So I think it will start uh, from the lifestyle. So if you're able to incorporate that, then you'll have a proper mindset to adapt to it. That's why I think minimalism is something we should adopt. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Dose Master Manikanda. Yeah. Minimalism is a mindset that relationships, physical things, selection, whether we can use minimalism in that, we decide on our thoughts. What is the mindset we have? It all depends on our thoughts. If you have a positive mindset and if we think, that unnecessary things removed from our mind and we should enter what is what are the things important to us. For example, I am not used to watch television every day. I am not watching. I don't want that everyday news because I think it is a barrier to me to spend my day-to-day -day life because that negative thoughts and negative feelings are coming. I am not associating people who are discussing news also. That is my mindset. I am filtering what I enter into my mind. From that, I used to think about what I, I am buying, what I am thinking, and what are the relationships will I will have. If it is a toxic relationship, like I ex explained earlier, I will remove it. That is the mindset which will guide you to associate this minimalism. Okay. Let me quickly go through. The minimalism can use for happiness. 
how you can decide what you want and know yourself better. No, there is no one who knows better you than you because you are the person you who knows your strengths and weaknesses, your feelings, and you can decide what you want and adapt with minimalism and enjoy your journey. Then those masters, you can decide now, are you a minimalist? Then it's compared to relationship, physical things, and your mindset. Please think about it and ask your questions. Are there any questions? Yeah, I'd like to ask you, when you talk of yourself as being a minimalist with the mindset, I haven't really got the gist of what you're saying. Can you say it in one line? Is it uh, thinking less or uh, communicating less when you're talking of minimalist in the mindset? Yes. Minimalist in mindset means, for me, it is the thing I decide what I want to feed into my mind. And my thoughts will be decided by my ideas and my mindset positions. That means if I decide to select what I want to hear, what I want to enjoy, that will give me a new feeling and that feeling will lead to the actions I will take. That is the mindset I am talking about, minimalism mindset. It will be depend, different from person to person. This minimalism concept is different from person to person. It's your own choice. You can decide what kind of minimalism mindset you can have. Anusha, I think uh, I give gave you the answer. Are you satisfied? Yes. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Anusha. I have a question, Sudharma. <laughs> yes, Divya. Quite some time back, I saw a post by someone. She was an ex-member of our club. Uh, she had put a very beautiful message. She's from a royal family uh, of Lucknow. And she had uh, given the picture of her house, you know, the palace, uh, where she says, it's, it's more like a palace. And she says that in a world driven by minimalism, we are forgetting the grandeur of the old. Um, I celebrate the grandeur. So... Don't you feel that minimalism to a certain extent is also an assault on the tradition or the heritage? Because if you look at our sculptures, if you look at the palaces and all, that's not minimalist. So promoting minimalism, will that not wipe out history in certain ways? I think no. I, I have heard some kings and queens, they have also that all the wealth but they have also used that minimalism. They have used minimum set of needs to fulfill their wants and needs. They have even donated their own things to the people. It is the only mindset. If you are in a palace, you can decide and you can practice minimalism in your own way. If you want to adapt into a relationship, you can adapt. If you want to adapt it in your physical things, you can adapt. Even you can use uh, that luxury bedrooms, but you can have another set of minimum things. That means luxury thing also, you, you don't want to put all the things into a room, you can have minimum items. Luxury thing, but minimum items. It is also part of minimalism. You can spend a lot of money, but for long-term purpose. In Sri Lanka also, I have heard kings and queens have used a lot of colors and all, but some people have used minimalism. It is the mindset and you can practice even you are in a luxurious house or not. I think I answered the question. Okay, it's time up. I would like to conclude my sessions and over to you, Toastmaster of the Day. Thank you, Toastmaster uh, Yeah, even I can uh, just expanding that same thought, what sort of Baba question, right? I even just want to contribute to the same point. I believe earlier days, if you take 100 years or few years back, we had enough resource to spend and then people have a mindset of, okay, there is something go beyond that. But at this lifestyle or the way we are progressing now, there is a limitation. So we need to be like little frugal about things, 
that's where i think that minimalistic mindset we should adopt and then we should also tell other generation to use the reforms accordingly for so that uh, they can progress for the future uh, keeping that part aside uh, uh, before closing the session i just take a minute to uh give a quick introduction about lakshmi sorry last time uh, last few months back i was not able to do that just giving a few liners about lakshmi uh, lakshmi is a behavioral and leadership trainer lakshmi found herself uh, aikai i think this a word i believe it's a japanese secret for the joyful life from not wrong uh, through a job uh, with akshay patra foundation she facilitates training programs across india that upskills and motivate the frontline workers of the organization and to upskill herself she is here at toastmaster right so that's it uh, uh, from uh, the speaker one uh, overall i just want to confirm from the timer if there is a disqualification actually uh, toastmaster sudarma concluded that here uh speech uh, 19 minutes but uh, he she gave a facility to answer the questions so there because of that reason she spent 23 minutes therefore i want to say uh, his speech is disqualified okay uh sorry i i think i just missed what is it 22 or 23 minutes we completed overall Over on twenty uh, three minutes. Okay. Okay. So I will uh, leave this to decide at the last during the evaluation section. Uh, before uh, we uh start uh with our five minutes break, uh, I just give a quick glimpse uh before we restart our meeting again. Uh, so once we come back uh, from the break. i'll quickly give you like a uh, few items which is actually a blockage for being inclusive so with that uh, we will take 5 minutes right now it is close to like 8:23 in my watch and then uh, we'll give a grace time of 2 more minutes so we can start with 8:35 uh, pm we hope we'll be back in 8 minutes so 3 minutes i think we can cover it up
मिस्टर मिश्रा अक्षय शालिनी कविता मिस्टर वेंकट नो वे जो मास्टर इट इज नॉट विजिबल द वीडियो I am not able to hear anything, but I can see some video. Yeah, the video is playing. I believe uh, we can't. I can't hear anything. It's not audible. Second floor. Is it audible? Ah, uh, no, fourth actually. It's audible. Is it audible? Mani? Did you also get stuck in the path? Mani, is it audible? Ah, uh, it is better now. Yeah, you can just play it from the beginning. Perfect. Uh, no, I live next to. Okay, so are we back from the break? Then we can I just ride scooter. play with this video. Very convenient. Okay, then let's uh, resume the meeting with this video. Okay. Yeah. Sure. By the way, you're. मिस्टर मिश्रा अक्षय शालिनी कविता मिस्टर वेंकट नो वे आई वॉज जस्ट बींग पोलाइट आई एम नॉट गिल्टी आई फेल्ट बैड नो दैट वॉज मेन टू बी अट जून नो 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 इट वॉज जस्ट अ कॉम्प्लीमेंट Hmm. Let's start from the beginning and see what happened. Thank you. Thanks. Good morning. Good morning, Mr. Second floor. Ah, uh, no, fourth actually. Did you also get stuck in the path traffic? Ah, uh, no. I live next street. I ride a scooter. Very convenient. By the way, you're looking very nice. Oh, thank you, sir. Acha cha, appraisal meeting. <laughs> Don't worry, you will get it. You will get it. Good morning, Shyam. What happened? Don't even ask. Yeah, you know that Mishra ji. He thought I'm dressed like this just to impress the boss. Can you believe that? Men. So listen, sir, boss. In I need to ask for leave next week. Then leave in the middle of a praises. Wait, what's your excuse? Are you pregnant? Oh no! Wait, wait, wait. You can use your madrasi bonding and ask him. Of course, he'll give you leave. Go, go, go. Go ask him. <laughs> I see. Na pora. Hello. Ah, ah, ah. Ah, Kavita, bring the mission. Shama, you should have been in the show yesterday. You missed an amazing show, yeah. You were so good. Hey, Ashwin, how was the show yesterday? See, it was a brilliant show. Right? Hello, young achiever of the year. <laughs> Morning, sir. Morning. What's up? Coffee? Break already, yeah. <laughs> Evening, seven p.m. Come, come. Sure, sir. I log in from home. No, 
ऑफिस श्योर सर छोटा सा प्रॉब्लम है The client wants to run the production in two locations simultaneously. No problem. Which will involve a lot of traveling. Sir, I can. I know, I know. Which is exactly why I asked Pooja to take the lead so you can relax. Hmm. So now, what do you say? Arey, I was just showing empathy, considering he's disabled. Uh, you mean differently? Yeah, yeah. That's what. But boss here was mean to me. Not as if you are perfect, Akshay. You judged me because of my disability. Excuse me. Look who's talking. You judge me just because of the dress I'm wearing. Women don't dress just to impress people. By the way. By the way, oh. you keep saying I can work because I'm from Madras. That's also not cool. No, but that's a joke. Oh, oh you when it happens, it's not a joke. But you well, know, I'm not making it. That's a joke. No, I seriously. You keep saying it every time. You are not two times. Thank you. So, it's all of you. You're all guilty of unconscious bias. What bias? Unconscious bias, judging people based on stereotypes which you are not even aware of, like assuming that Shalini was well dressed only for a better appraisal. Now that's a bias, Mr. Mishra. By the way, you're looking very nice today. Oh, thank you, sir. Thank you. You should have been more self-aware. And you thinking that Kavita uses her regional connect to pull favors? No, that was meant to be a joke. You could have showed more empathy. In the middle of appraisals. Yeah. Wait, what's your excuse? Are you pregnant? <laughs> hey. <laughs> And Akshay, you could have asked for a second opinion. But छोटा सा problem है. The client wants to run the production in two locations simultaneously, which will involve. Will that be an issue? <laughs> no problem, sir. I can shuttle between the two locations. Thank you for asking. All right then. All the best. Thank you, sir. Thank you. I got it. I I got it. I'm guilty of unconscious bias. I assume young people take a lot of breaks and don't take work seriously. uh guys uh can we go for a coffee break no <laughs> coffee <laughs> yes i love coffee thank you uh just checking everyone is back can you just have a quick show of hands so that we can quickly start okay okay welcome back to masters i'm guest uh, i think the video is more informative i think most of you must have seen this and i also paste the link in the chat window in our you get time just go back and see because there is some lag in the video uh, so i'll talk about what is my takeaway or what i see a uh, bit couple of uh, insight about this video right Be because the video is very very clear like what actually people carry out as an unconscious bias but what is actually unconscious bias why it is getting impacting that are being an inclusive people right so one in the video they mentioned being a uh, stereotype right it is just about generalizing things instead of talking about their individuality that's one and there is also an uh, term called halo and oran effect so without evidence when a people is going to judge for your positivity which is called halo in the negative side which is oran effect again uh, the next one which is the recent bias recent is 
recently you you going to work with some individual uh, in the recent days based on that you form a perspective about an individual but if you have worked with a person for a long time period uh, it you have a different perspective so don't always have the recent bias then again there is a group thinking uh sometimes people will not voice out their concern to have this harmony in a team in a group they will go with the whatever the group says all together right so they will grow with a group opinion not about an individual opinion the finally uh which is like in group uh so we will start having an bias towards for people from certain play for language mostly relating to us right so these are three four elements are called out in that video i think from this the takeaway for most of us will be that if you want to be like un unconscious bias to be removed from you one suggestion is be conscious about it right uh that's it about this being uh, unconscious bias how it is important uh getting back to our uh, second section uh, which is our table topic section uh the table topic section uh for today is toastmaster punit so punit is a non fiction book enthusiast a dedicated practitioner of david allen getting things done method and prominent excom member at toastmaster indra pride indra nagar pride so now i'm calling upon uh, punit uh, i'm just handing over the virtual stage to punit thank you toastmaster mani chandan and i would like to welcome you all to the table topic session where we improve our impromptu speaking skill by practicing it and this is one skill where it, it helps us to handle the situation like interviews where we have to quickly organize thoughts and uh, express them and uh, this exercise prepared for those cow and googly boss and this is how it goes i call members volunteer guest and give them a random topics and you have to speak about the topic minimum of 1 minute and maximum of 2 uh, minute and timer will help you with a uh, with the cards yeah uh, i will show red card at 1 minute green card yellow card at 1 uh, and 1/2 minute and red card at the second minute and you can speak till you see the green card once you see the red card that's a uh, time to you to wrap it up in order to give a i i have prepared with a more topics i think we have less time if possible i encourage all of you to uh need to to speak between 1 to 2 minutes so that we i can cover more speakers now the first i would like to start with uh, toastmaster uh, distinguished toastmaster saro datta uh, uh, saro can i give you a speech can i give you a topic yeah. yes please sure. yeah saro for you the topic is how important is education in promoting inclusivity from a young age i repeat again how important is education in promoting inclusivity from engage and over to you uh, saurav in my opinion education is meaningless if it is not promoting inclusivity i think your video today is an eye opener for all of us that what we take as a very natural phenomena that we are all inclusive is actually something that doesn't happen i will want to touch on a very raw nerve right now we indians whenever we travel abroad we complain about racism and i've seen this happening very frequently particularly when we go to the first world countries that brown people are discriminated against there's a racism can we take a quick pause and think how much we are racist within our country itself we still call people who stay in chennai as madrasis anyone actually staying in the south we call them madrasis the word chinki is still used very generously in all parts of the country and we consider that to be really funny in fact if anyone from the northeastern states get offended we feel they don't have a good sense of humor even though we know that the word chinki is actually illegal to use in india every time someone meets me and gets to know that i am bengali the first question is that so having rasgulla the fact is i don't like rasgulla i like sandesh i like mishti doi but i don't have rasgulla i don't like rasgulla that's not my type of sweet so everyone coming from calcutta has to have has to like rasgulla 
we always have fish for breakfast, lunch, dinner, tea, and whatever. Uh, everyone coming from South India is a madrasi. Anyone who stays uh, in Punjab uh, is into drugs or they are into alcohol. Where is this problem coming from? This problem is coming from the conditioning. And the only way we can defeat that conditioning is through education. Not hoping that the society will change, but actively investing and in changing the future generation so that they don't have the same damage done to them, what we have unleashed in ourselves. Back to you, TT. Thank you, Saurav. And uh, your views help me to and help us to understand the importance of inclusive. And I think uh, education is the education where we have to add a foundation to the to uh, promote an inclusivity. Thank you for that. The next speaker I would like to call uh, uh, Toastmaster Noor Mohammed. Noor Mohammed, are you there? Would you like to take topic? I'm I'm eating something. Could you go along with the ones who have raised hand? I'll I'll yeah, yeah, I will, Okay. I shall I call Lakshmi? Lakshmi, uh, can I give a topic? Yes. Uh, Toshmasha Lakshmi, for you, the topic is imagine a world where everyone's voice was truly heard. How would our communities change? I repeat again. Imagine a world where everyone's voice was truly heard. How would our communities change? And over to you. I'm just trying to imagine that. I'm just trying to imagine that world where all our voices would be heard. Would it create a chaos? Would there be too much of noise? Would there be too much of unwanted sounds ringing in the ear? A debatable question. Something that it is even hard to imagine at this point of time. But thinking deeper into this topic, just the other day, I had a small incident at home with my son, who is 10 years old. He was trying to tell me something. And all that I had to tell him was, no, no, you cannot do it. What was I doing? I was not giving him an opportunity to talk. I was not listening to him. I was not being inclusive. What did that lead to? That led to him raising his voice, talking louder and literally shouting. That's when I realized, hey, Lakshmi, I think there is something wrong that you're doing. So I held back and then I let him talk. The minute I let him talk, the minute he felt that I was listening to him, he calmed down and he was able to express himself completely. So yes, somewhere I strongly believe that the base of human bonds and human relationship should be respect. Respect in allowing the other person to talk. Respect in wanting to listen to what the other person has to talk. And as always, drive a balance so that we don't create a chaos, but we are all heard. Thank you. Thank you, Toshmaster Lakshmi. That was an apt story and that was interesting. Now, let us move on to the next speaker. I would like to call uh, the guest, Elios, uh, E-L-E-O-S. Am I right? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay, for you, I'm going to give the topic. If you had the power to make one change in your workplace to promote inclusivity, what would it be? I repeat again, if you had the power to make one change in your workplace to promote inclusivity, what would it be? And over to you, Elios. Can you hear me and see me before I start? Yes, I can hear you loud and clear. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, fellow Toastmasters, probable the AIDS restriction is the option that I will go if I have the power to change the workplace to promote inclusivity. Because, you know, so many people 
in the older age, they didn't get the chance to showcase their talent. They are just restricted by their age. But yeah, we, we know the truth. It is a bitter truth. We did a regeneration because of those gap years for the generation make some of the situation get attention that will be a worse condition is conflict conflict just by misunderstanding and that's the point or the idea between behind the it's as the record the requirement and I do believe even the younger age can get a better position. So they are having talents that are needed by the industry, but they cannot get the chance to shine just because they are too young for that position, for that senior position, because he needs to lead senior members of the team. So yeah, it's a gentleman to those masters. I don't want to say that just forget about the AIDS, but just give them the chance, at least few months or even few years to prove themselves if they are worth it. If not, well, say, let's go with the current SOP and we obey the rules. To thank you Elios uh, that was an interesting take on the topic now let us move to the next speaker I would like to call uh, Gitika would you like to take topic shall I give a topic okay for you the topic is how can we inch? okay here it is how can technology be utilized to break down barriers and promote inclusivity I repeat again how can technology be utilized to break down barriers and promote inclusivity and over to you? When I think of the thing that is at the core of any human being, the innate desire, irrespective of our abilities and disabilities, is the need to be felt, heard, seen, and validated. And in the era where technology is revolutionizing our world, it's a boon in many ways. It makes me recall of the time when COVID hit the world. Everything suddenly stopped for everyone, but the people who really benefited out of it what's the special abled people or may I call what some people call it as disabled people, but literally the special abled people. I hear about it all the time. People who did not have feet, who could not walk to the office every day, but their minds were sharp. They got the opportunity to work in workplaces. The result, post-technology, hybrid, remote works became a norm just because people with special abilities could shine through. People who could not use hands. They did so many seminars where they used their words of mouth and impressed thanks to technology. There is not just one area. There are many that I think too. The Braille script for blinds, it has turned. That's technology. We are grateful for the technology that has revolutionized the word, made people with special abilities included in a way they have never felt seen, heard, and validated before. And the feeling of inclusion is so palpable among all the audience that I feel technology is here to revolutionize the world to an extent where we won't even have to talk about inclusion the way we talk now. Probably it will be a norm that everybody is included by default. That's how I see how, that's how I see the way technology will revolutionize the world and make it inclusive thank you thank you geetika i uh, totally agree that how technology is encouraging inclusive environment even people with 
uh, disability can uh, give a contribution to the world with the help of the technology and thank you uh, for sharing your opinion about the topic now i would like to call uh, toastmaster noor mohammed noor mohammed and for toastmaster noor mohammed are you there yes sir i am yeah. go ahead yeah for you the topic is how do school uniforms contribute to creating an inclusive environment i repeat again how do school uniforms contribute to creating inclusive environment and over to you sir thank you table topics master fellow toast masters and dear guests i remember very vaguely uh, just a couple of years ago there was a change in the school uniform for my kid he was studying in uh, icsk indian community of uh, school of kuwait and they had this change in uniform now there was a big uh, uproar why the uniform should uh, you know uh, regarding this particular change now the the idea of uniform is to bring about uniformity whether you come from any religion any caste creed race whatever it might kuwait is a multicultural when we mix with arabs we mix with syrians lebanese uh, uh, from egypt from people from different asian nationalities like philippines thailand uh, we have a cultural diversity but the thing about inclusion is that it brings about the other side of the story that is we lose our cultural identity we try to conform to the norm of this global uh, you know inclusivity which we have right now uh, there is a there is a confusion of identity right so you go to a particular school wherein you are mixed with a lot of children from different uh, nationalities you try to conform without knowing the kids don't have any understanding of why certain things are done in a certain way right we indians like uh, sort of speaking about anybody from the south is called a madrasi okay calling a madrasi is by but respecting who they are why they do what they do is understanding right so what we need to inculcate in any school going child is an understanding of why people are different we all should retain our individual identities our individual cultural background uh, all that we are doing for a particular reason right? now the school uniforms is a great thing like the idea of school uniform is to bring uniformity but in that uniformity if we can identify the richness of individual culture it is what back to you table talk thank you toastmaster noor mahmud i uh, i would like to highlight the 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 adding if we have a uni, uniform and that will break the background identity that is very important for a uh encouraging the inclusive environment and uh, i like that uh, the content from you and now i would like to uh, it's a last topic and i would like to give this topic to anusha i would like to take this topic sure yeah uh, anusha for you the topic is what does inclusivity mean to you in the context of personal relationship i repeat again what does inclusivity mean to you in the context of personal uh, relationship over to you anusha just picturize a family in which we have around 15 individuals each one of them has a different relationship with another individual and there's so many permutations and combinations which come about by virtue of the fact that 15 individuals exist now what does inclusivity mean psychology says that you're bound to have closer relationships with some individuals and you're bound to be further off from others you might not like sister in law a so much and might like sister in law b a lot but what would you do if you were actually inclusive you would have a basic quantum of fairness in your relationships wherein you treat each individual according to the way they are behaving what i mean to say is that you react to them as individuals in their own right you prosper along with them and at the same time you don't ignore them that doesn't mean it bars you from being closer to sister in law b 
all it says is that try and give each individual the standing of individuality in your life so that they're recognized as individuals. They don't feel left out. They don't feel stamped out. They don't look and think that you are being partisan to some individuals and closer to others. That is what inclusivity would foster, especially in joint families. You know, this kind of concept would be really well thought of in joint families where the permutations and combinations of the complex human mind are absolutely ununderstandable. So inclusivity is come in, include me, don't be exclusive, stay with me, give me the ability to be heard, do not agree with me, do not be obsequious with me, do not be groveling at my feet, but all I'm asking you to do is accept me as an individual, as a human being in my own right, and thereafter turn towards me and behave towards me as you would with any other individual. Back to the Table Topics Master. Thank you, Anusha. I appreciate your take on the topic. You highlight the importance of giving an importance to each and every member, and that is quite interesting. And thank you for that. I can understand uh, Toshma, uh, Yogesh and Anand were interested in taking a topic. And with the interest of the time, I could not give a topic to you. And I hope uh, you will get a chance in the next uh, uh, the meeting. And with that, I hope we all enjoyed the table topic session. And with this, I'm going, I'm handing the stage back to uh, Toshma of the day. And Toshma uh, of the day, over to you. Uh, thank you, Toastmaster Puneet. Uh, really enjoyed this topic and then the insight from other fellow Toastmasters on this topic. Uh, with interest of time, I'm quickly handing over to the general avatar, uh, um, uh, DTM Surabdatta. Thank you so much, Toastmaster of the day, Manikandan. So the way we will do the general evaluation is that I will start with uh, my observations about the meeting and uh, some of the role takers till the, uh, you know, the prepared speech, apart from the prepared speech, obviously the evaluation is pending. We'll come to the evaluation after that. And once the once I share my feedback on the evaluation, then I will invite the tagging team players. So let us get, let's get started with the meeting theme, uh, the meeting. Um, so full marks to Bimpy yet again uh, and the entire XCOM team. Uh, it, it is kind of, I'm patting my own back because I'm also a part of the executive committee and the education committee. But I think we deserve uh, all the credits for keeping the meeting so seamless. And I always say that um, the Gabby is taking a team or role or a general evaluator role at the Gabby is, is really easy because there are people who are working hard to keep it really easy. So you get the entire uh, list of introductions and all those project details, everything in one single document. You don't have to run from pillar to post. There also everything is arranged chronologically in the order in which the introductions has to be given. So you're not running from one page to the other page trying to find introduction of a Manikandan and then introduction of a Puneet. It is exactly sequenced the way it should be. So great job to the entire uh, meeting management team, uh, people working relentlessly on this. So Dharma, and the entire education committee team, Bimpi, Manvi, all the Sergeant Adams, I think you deserve a big round of applause for the way you have been uh, planning these meetings and executing these meetings week after week. I really, really, really appreciate you for that. And I've, I've heard this from a lot of people that the Gabby's, uh, the planning and everything that's there uh, is, is absolutely top notch. And uh, that is something that's possible only because of you guys. So please, uh, please accept my, my appreciation for this. Moving on, um, the meeting started right on time. Thanks to the Sergeant at Arms. There was a quick roll call before the meeting as usual. Um, today, because I was the general evaluator, I generally do this, but today I was uh, deliberately silent on that. I was just watching what's happening. And what happened is that everyone, uh, everyone's presence was confirmed. If they're missing, then they were called immediately and they were got into the meeting on time. So everything went as per plan. So good job there, the Sergeant at Arms, Pimpi Kumari. Moving on to the presiding officer, the presiding officer did a very good job in terms of making all the guests feeling included. Um, she invited everyone to share their 30 seconds introduction. Uh, one quick tip, and uh, this is probably more uh, a note to self as well, that uh, 
sometimes the guest introductions uh, are very long. Sometimes they're very short. So if we can give them a quick framework, like, uh, you know, give a quick 30 seconds introduction about yourself, where you mentioned whether you're a Toastmaster or a guest, if you have heard about Toastmasters before, and what is it about Toastmasters that makes you most excited? Maybe three liners, uh, which will uh, probably help them, uh, you know, kind of keep their introductions relevant. Um, and Nancy, if you did mention that, if I missed that, then in that case, uh, my apologies. But um, in in but that's something probably we can put as a culture in terms of the introduction that will keep it very pointed. Um, and uh, apart from that, uh, since there were a few guests in the meeting, Nancy, it would have been better if you would have talked about the 100 years of Toastmaster, the thing starting in 1924 and why it was important. So the guests would have benefited from that uh, history of Toastmasters. Moving on to the Toastmaster of the day and the theme. A very, very important uh, theme, uh, money, and uh, I personally feel very strongly about it, particularly casual, uh, you know, non-inclusivity, uh, where it is a planned and known non-inclusivity, casual, you know, not known racism, where we are doing this with the intent of doing it, that I am saying someone, I'm calling out someone based on their skin color or their gender or their disability, because I want to hurt, hurt their feelings. Um, that's sad, but I would still say there's an easier problem to handle because we have got an institution built, uh, laws are there, legalities are there, there's a movement against that. So that's kind of somewhat is being handled. I'm not saying we are anywhere near to perfection there, but we are working on that. I think the bigger problem is the casual racism and the non-inclusivity because of that, the casual racism, the casual sexism, where we don't even realize the video that you shared today. None of the people realized that, you know, they were actually being non-inclusive. They all felt that, you know, I am doing great. It's the other person who has a problem. And I think if you all think about it, you all are guilty and we all are guilty of doing that somewhere or the other. And uh, let's not be ashamed about that. Uh, because this has come from years of conditioning. We have been told that way by our parents, by our grandparents. And let's not hate them also for that because that's what they have also learned from their previous generation. So this is something that we are getting in hierarchy. Uh, but somewhere, you know, as uh, as uh, in COVID, we used to use this term, right? That the Break the chain, right? We have to break the chain somewhere. So I think the breaking the chain, the onus is on us today. And uh, Mani, you did a great job. I think you can proudly tell yourself that you took a great initiative in breaking the chain today. There are 20 people who is who are going back from this meeting with an understanding of where the problem is, right? And this is important, Mani, and uh, that is what makes this very special. So you do deserve a big round of applause for doing this. This is much needed, much needed, Mani. I will not go into the details of uh, the finer things that you could have done this, you could have done that, because the first time you're taking the Toastmaster of the Day role. So uh, I think that's something that will be a learning on the job. So let that happen with time. But the most important thing what you did today is you left us uh, you, you left us with our thought and, and we feel much more empowered and uh, enriched now. Thank you. Uh, moving on to the uh, Table Topic Master. Uh, the Table Topic Master had great uh, topics which were very relevant to the theme. And uh, Puneet, particularly, I loved one thing that you did mention that there are two guests, uh, Anand and Yogesh, who raised their hand, but I couldn't accommodate uh, due to paucity of time. I think that acknowledgement is very important because the guests don't know, you know, did, was I ignored? Do they have a club policy of not allowing member anyone apart from members? Uh, am I attending too many meetings as guests so that I'm made being made feel unwelcome? Uh, you didn't leave them with that doubt. You left them with a very clear answer that, yes, I would have wanted to have you as a speaker, but I'm sorry the timing did not permit me. That's exactly how it should be done, Puneet, and that's exactly how you did it. Uh, but one thing which I think you told me as an evaluator last week, as my evaluator, I will tell the same thing back to you. Somewhere I felt that uh, your observations on the table topics were itself a mini table topic. So uh, it could have been kept short, a little shorter, because somewhere I felt it went a little longer. And uh, I'm not paying back. Honestly, this is a feedback from my side <laughs> as the general evaluator. Yeah, it's just a coincidence that the tables have turned today. <laughs>
<laughs> okay, but great job, Puneet. Lovely topics. I loved speaking on them and I loved hearing the others speak on them. Thank you. And with this, let me now invite our evaluator for our speaker. Uh, the introduction has already been given. What more can I say apart from the fact that this lady is a wonderful evaluator. She evaluates with compassion. She evaluates with passion. And um, she is a division contestant in evaluation. So she is definitely going to come up with some elevating evaluation today. Really looking forward to this, Lakshmi. Over to you. Thank you, general evaluator. And you did add to the pleasure a little bit. But let me just give my best and see what I can do to help Toastmaster Sudharma. Toastmaster Sudharma, thank you so much for walking us through and sharing information about such an apt topic in today's world, minimalism. Today, with all those big packages that we are getting home, the corporate packages that we are taking home, our life is moving from minimalism to, I don't know, what is the other side of it? And such talks, such speeches are very essential to bring us back to the reality and think, what are we doing? Especially like one best example for this, I would like to say is the water shortage in Bangalore, right? If we had thought about it a little earlier, we could have, you know, probably would have avoided that situation. So that is the kind of impact that your speech has created on your listeners and especially me. I must say it was a very well-researched uh, speech, very informative and at the same time interactive as well. Why do I say interactive? Because you had questions opened up for uh, the audience to answer. Researched, you had a PPT, you had uh, a beautifully structured PPT. You started with the basic question of making us understand the meaning of minimalism. And then you went on to explain the different types, like the physical relationship and the mindset. And at the end of it, you are also able to answer questions. Now, as a speaker, you can answer questions only if you are well prepared. Now, coming to uh, certain areas of improvement. This was a topic on minimalism. And this was a keynote speech. What happens in a keynote speech is it's 80 to 22 minutes. Come on. I think we are all getting old. You know, we are all in this world where we find it a little difficult to concentrate beyond a certain point. So I would suggest that you use minimalism in your speeches as well. What do I mean by minimalism? Use the appropriate or apt speed. Sometimes because of your because we have a lot of information to share we want to talk all of that so with that our speed increases when speed increases the people who are trying to concentrate also might lose track so a control over your speed now one place where i found that is you asked a question what are the rules of minimalism no rules i wish there was a pause there for people to think but you you ask a question and you answer right so that is one thing where you can probably uh, challenge yourself. And the second uh, point that I would probably want you to think about is how to make it more interactive, probably have a small game. You have 18 to 22 minutes in hand. A small game where you show a picture and ask them, is this minim minimalism? Or I do a match the following, something like that. So that people are able to retain you know, visual images, we tend to retain it uh, for a longer period as well. With this, I would say overall, it was a well-researched, informative, and an interactive speech. However, I would probably suggest or want you to take a decision on if you would like to give this project another chance by, you know, taking care of the two or three points of speaking with correct pauses, making it more interactive. It's a choice I leave to you. Thank you. And over to you, General Evaluator. Thank you so much, uh, Lakshmi. Before I give my comments on your evaluation, Kishan, what is the time taken by the evaluator? Yeah. 
question. Okay, yes. Am I audible? Yeah. What is the time taken by the evaluator? That uh, she take uh, three three point fifty four second. Okay. So three point fifty four second. So the first comment, Lakshmi, you would know that I think you can see this coming. I can see the look on your face that no, this is not acceptable. For someone who's going for the division contest, exceeding even by one second is going to kill you from inside, right? Forget about what the world thinks of you. You are going to hate yourself for going over time. So please don't do this to yourself, please. My earnest request, resist that temptation to add yet one more point uh, because... Without that point, you may still win, but with that point, you will definitely lose. So please, please, please have that discipline. That's the first thing. Second, um, you said that uh, there are two recommendations that you would want to make. The first one was that uh, you that the speaker should bring minimalism in the speech. I absolutely love the way you brought that up because... Um, you are adding a theme to the evaluation and the theme was connected to the speaker's speech, right? That's one. That's a very beautiful way of presenting an evaluation. Now, that was very well done. The problem is the illustration that you gave was nothing about minimalism, but it was about slowing down. So are you saying that if she slowed down, then the speech would have been more minimalist? That's what I heard that, you know, you don't, you were going very fast. I think your point was probably more around or you could have stressed more around the fact that you don't need to pack your speech with so much of content. You can reduce content. You don't need to tell us everything in the same meeting, in the same speech. You always have one more speech. You always have one more meeting. Something like that, which would have told the speaker that you don't need to bring in so much of content. And then specifically, if you could mention that this portion could have been taken out in your opinion, or this portion was not adding much value, or there was a redundancy here, or an information overload there, very specific instances, that would have helped her, rather than saying that, you know, uh, you should have slowed down. And um, what was the second point, uh, Lakshmi? I'm sorry, the recommendation that you had? Yeah, uh, the second recommendation was probably to use a small game where... Uh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, so I always, uh, you know... Uh, I have a feeling that when it comes to the speech content, we have to have a bit of a balance in terms of how much we will tell the speaker to do because the content is still theirs, right? And the way the speech is executed is their choice. Uh, to say that you should have engaged the audience uh, with uh, more questions, uh, with, with some kind of activities and all that is fine, but she has to play games it's being that specific is something that I would avoid doing for the simple reason that the speaker may not be comfortable playing games because as an evaluator, uh, we will have to challenge them, but we don't need to push them uh, so that they feel nervous and they, 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 you know, they, they don't feel confident about it. I'm saying this because every time someone tells me that when you do a speech, you do a role play, when you're talking about a daughter, talk like a, talk like a girl. I get really nervous, you know, I get sweaty palms, I get uh, sweat on my forehead because I can't in my wildest dream imagine myself trying to uh, mimic the voice of a five-year-old girl or a 18-year-old woman. It's it's very difficult for me to do that. So, right. So, I I I kind of get very nervous at that thought. So, just, uh, just a small thought on that. A couple of areas where you could have pointed out about Sudharma is the question-answer session could have been handled better. Uh, I think that was definitely a room for uh, improvement there uh, because uh, her answers were uh, not complete and she kept on repeating the same point two, three minutes, uh, two, three times. Uh, uh, she gave the answers and then she again repeated the same answer. So it doesn't make much sense. No wonder she went over time. So I think that is where she could have definitely done it. So at the end, you told her that she should repeat uh, the project is your recommendation, but I didn't see you giving enough reasons for that. Just because uh, she went a little fast and that she did not play games, hence she should repeat the project. I think that's being a little uh, too harsh in terms of a recommendation. That's that's my observation personally. Uh, but again, up to Sudharma to uh, to decide what's the best thing for him to do. 
Okay, with this, uh, thank. can we have a big round of applause for our, both the speakers and evaluators? We will not have any polls today, obviously, because we have one speaker, one evaluator, and then again, both the speaker and the evaluator got disqualified. So uh, we have a happy family here, uh, no best speaker, everyone is a good speaker, and everyone is a good event. With this, let us move on to the um, uh, to the table, to the uh, tackle team, the timer, our counter, grammarian, and listener. Um, so uh, the uh, yeah, very valid point, Noor. I'm I'm just going to comment on that. Uh, he mentioned that we don't recommend. So uh, I think the what Lakshmi did is that she gave her a choice that you know this is something that I would have done. But yeah, Lakshmi, I think the way you could have put it is that if I were you, I would have probably attempted this instead of saying that I recommend that you attempt this. I think that's a that's a much more uh, politically correct way of recommending, and that's it. I think that's 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 a good way of putting it. Okay, let's move on quickly to the timer. Timer. We know that uh, one speaker one evaluator is disqualified how are we doing on the table topic speakers any disqualifications there <laughs> okay so we are all good on the table topics you're on mute. yeah now you're audible yes uh, all the table topic Speakers have been qualified here. They have managed uh, a lot of time here. Postmaster Sudharma exceeded uh, 30, mean, 30 seconds, uh, and uh, Postmaster Lakshmi exceeded 24 seconds here. Except Postmaster Sudharma and Postmaster Lakshmi, others are qualified. As per this table, or do you, Toastmaster? Sorry. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, Toastmaster Kishan, for the timer report. A wonderful job as a timer. Uh, keeping the timing for longer speech durations is always difficult. I think you did an impeccable job there as a first time timer. You definitely deserve a big round of applause. Thank you so much, Toastmaster Kishan. Moving on to the R counter for today. Again, a debutant role taker, Toastmaster Ritu Sukale. All yours. I'm just going to share the screen just a moment. So this is my observation. There were lot, uh, there are lot, not, there are not many errors out here. Uh, as far as the scores are there, you can see there. Uh, I think uh, Sri Lakshmi uh, Egde. She's the one who needs a bit of improvement. And uh, there's another one. Puni, I found a lot of errors in his speech. Apart from that, I think everyone had minimal errors. Over to you, Saurabh. Okay. Uh, great report. Uh, just keep it there for a few uh, couple of minutes. Just keep it there. Let me just quickly glance through this. I think this is all good. You have captured all the details very well. Um, uh, I particularly like the fact that I've used less number of hours, but that's beside. As a general evaluator, one feedback, uh, you do not say to the speaker that you um, have a lot of errors. We don't say that. Remember in Toastmasters, we always use the language of constructive feedback, which means that the way to say this to Puneet is, and Puneet is a veteran Toastmaster, he'll not mind a little bit, but there are more sensitive people like me uh, who may feel very uh, you know, disappointed and nervous and may not come for the next meeting. So uh, for people like us, use a much softer tone, say something like this, that uh, Saurabh, we would have loved to see you use less number of hours, right? That would give us some confidence. Um, so just, just be mindful of people like me in the yeah. meeting and uh, be a little gentle with your choice of words. Otherwise, we'll done Ritu. Lovely report. Thank you so much. Can we have a big round of applause for our R counter, Toastmaster Ritu Supale? Moving on, the grammarian for today's meeting, Manisha Mishra. Manisha, you use Minakshi Mishra. I'm so sorry. Minakshi, are you there? Uh, yes, it's okay. And thank you, Toastmaster Sora. I'll just share my screen. A 
I hope you all can see my screen. Uh, so, uh, coming to the word of the day, Saurabh and uh, Gitika use the word of the day. Uh, probably I missed in case anyone has used uh, kindly. Uh, uh, I apologize for that in case I have missed and someone has used it. Uh, moving to the usage of quotes, I like the uh, usage of the quote uh, which Sudharma used. Live. I live with peace of mind and live the way we. Sorry, live with peace of mind and live the way we want with less harm to nature. The first quote uh, which she had uh, shown on her first slide, and uh, second usage was kind of Lakshmi had used base of human bond is respect. So I like both the uh, uh, you, uh, both the quotes, and the next was a nice usage of words. So I found a lot of nice. Uh, usage over here so dharma used like minimalism is automatic uh, it, in itself a very nice usage and then raw nerve i think that was used by sora uh sorry not sora uh, i'm sorry yeah i think saw by sora only it was used and then uh wisdom level and minimalism minimalism is a mindset that was used by so dharma and then second uh the next usage was recent bias and that was kind of new for me and i like that uh, 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 adjective to bias and uh, coming to lakshmi uh, i like that unwanted sound ringing in the ears after that gitega used a uh, uh, special abled people generally i have heard differently abled or disabled people but uh, she mentioned it as specially abled people which i liked and then mohammed used cultural identity and that was a kind of a uh, good usage and then anusha used standing of individuality i did not find any improper usage so that's it from my side over to you dosna sisora thank you so much minakshi um i loved your report you are a very gentle person and you are even even more gentler uh, grammarian uh, because i know that there were a few uh, improper uses during the course of the meeting probably you don't want to hurt hurt our sentiments since you uh, refrained from uh, you know pointing those out but remember while uh, we have to be empathetic and uh, sensitive to people at the same time if you notice something uh if you see something say that because uh, otherwise there is no point in uh, having a, a grammarian or an accountant because we have to be soft but at the same time we have to be also effective so let's let's keep that in mind uh and uh, can we have a big round of applause for our grammarian toastmaster minakshi mishra thank you minakshi for taking the role as a visiting toastmaster and finally shri lakshmi hegre is going to test our listening skills shri lakshmi the stage is yours okay thank you very much ekam sir what sure. alan was very when money when he when he met money kandan for the first time alan what alan was very when he, when money kandan met him for the first time anyone maxi maxi dress yes who put all this toastmaster punit okay good yeah which is uh, toastmaster money kandan's comfort place anyone did you mention mention about it in the beginning anyone his company amazon no that's his first comfort place and then now uh, i hope that the gabby's becomes his uh, yeah yeah gabby's comfort home yeah uh what are the three minimal three types of three types of minimalism toshma so they must mention in a speech physical relationships and uh, the third one i just slipped mindset mindset, mindset. 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 Yeah, very, yeah. very good what is sudharma's colleague's profession chartered accountant no another other profession anyone other than sudharma and are you related anyone can answer is online she is online business woman 
when people come to know Vidyam Saro is uh, Bengali, what they ask him? Do you like Roshgulla? Yeah, yeah, very, oh, very good. Yeah, what do you read him, Saro? Thank you so much, uh, Sri Lakshmi. That was a very sweet list of questions. I say sweet because we ended with Roshgulla. Um, one very uh, quick comment. Uh, this is something that I've learned from my PO. Uh, the listener's job is not to ask questions only. It's not a quiz master role where you just ask the questions. The listener's report. So at the end, you have to end with your comment. That So what did you find? Did you find us listening or did you find us hearing and not paying attention to the meeting? If you add that one line, you know, the value of this report increases much more. So that was my tag team. I have tackle team. I've already uh, shared my inputs about the entire meeting. I... Uh, rarely get a chance to be a general evaluator at the Gabby's meetings. I uh, guess I don't qualify because our VP education always brings ev general evaluators from outside. Uh, today was one of those rare occasions where I got this opportunity and I absolutely and thoroughly enjoyed it. Uh, I hope to get more such opportunities in the future to evaluate the Gabby's meetings. And uh, uh, now she's happy that uh, her role problems are solved. Thank you so much, Sudharma, and thank you everyone for this opportunity. Back to you, uh, Mani Kandan, for the closing and also the votes, the polls. We'll conduct the polls parallelly. Yeah, uh, so we will launch the poll. Uh, meanwhile, before I'm sharing it back to presiding officer, uh, just quick summary or the takeaway for the inclusive. I think everyone is able to take something from today's meeting. So just Two things is respect others, uniqueness, use the empathetic way to approach others. This is one submission now for the complete group. Uh, can we launch the poll? Yes. It's long, so you can continue. Yeah. Okay. So uh, I'm just handing over to presiding officer. Thank you so much, Toastmaster of the Day, Toastmaster Manikandran. In the meanwhile, the polls are being launched. I would like to hear it from our guests about today's meeting. A quick feedback. All right, uh, I'll take names. May I hear it from Gitika? Gitika, how's the Josh now? Oh, thank you, Nancy. <laughs> it was wonderful hearing all the beautiful topics, starting with minimalism. Uh, just made me think of what can I minimize in my life <laughs> to feel better. Then the topic of inclusion and the way people carved out story. Literally, the storyteller is in all of us. I really like uh, the story carved out by all the in the table topics uh, section. Also, uh, the evaluation part. I just enjoy listening to evaluation part. I think they were really robust and uh, sort of at the end being critical of the statement that he made is very apt that while we have to be soft, we have to be effective. So I think that lands really well. I thoroughly enjoyed it in that shell. <laughs> Thank you, Nancy. Thank you so much, Gitika, for the feedback. Uh, next, we may maybe hear it from Anusha. Yeah, it was a very enjoyable meeting. And I feel that the intensity with which you people take up your roles, that is uh, very commendable. I have a little suggestion. You know, it's uh, in clubs abroad, they have something called a hot seat speech, in which if anybody volunteers... And if you're running short of speakers, then you have an on-the-spot five-minute speech via speaker. So if that is possible, you know, to be thought of, or if you have a gap in your speaking lineup, then that could be utilized sometime if it's found viable. But overall, it was absolutely enthralling. And the way the Tagle team presented their uh, reports and the insight with which the GE presented his report it was uh, very, very, very enjoyable listening to all of it. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for the suggestion, Anusha. I really uh, would like to consider this, but at Gabby's, it has never been a single time that 
we don't have speakers. We never run run out of speakers at all. I'm sure. Uh, but even those speakers can volunteer for a hot seat. It's called a hot seat. They can come unprepared and they can say, give us a topic on the spot. Yes. So unprepared speeches and other things we have done multiple times. Uh, rather you call it Mad Hatter's party where everyone is unprepared about the rules because they don't know which role they are going to come for or uh, table topics in multiple formats. However, this hot seat is a new idea. We can probably launch it for all speakers who want to volunteer for this. Yeah, I think we lost the PO. Uh, she has uh, probably some network connectivity. So... Um, I'll take over as uh, the presiding officer, Sudharma. Yes, Sudhirian, sir. For the closure, because we are already uh, six minutes past the scheduled time. So let me quickly move on with the closure. Uh, I Okay, so yeah, we got a confirmation that she got dropped out due to a laptop issue. Uh, okay, and uh, okay, note, thank you so much for those beautiful... DPs that's coming up. Uh, and um, let me announce the results for today's meeting. Uh, the best uh, auxiliary role taker for today is Toastmaster. Okay, uh, okay, okay. Nancy is back. I'll let her do it. Nancy, I was, I just hijacked your PO role, but then again, it's back to you. Okay, am I audible and? Yes, you are. And visible. Okay, my laptop got really hot with this hot conversation. We were talking about hot seat. Uh, here I am back again. Now, uh, your suggestion well taken to uh, Anusha. Thank you so much for the suggestion. May I hear it from Toastmaster Noor? Noor, are you there in the meeting? Okay. Yes, Madam there. President, I am. I'm here. Yeah, I'm here. I, I usually come for sorrow. Uh, but uh, recently, someone else has been uh, really, really, uh, what do you call, persuasive for me to come to Gabby's meeting. That would be Toastmaster Sudharma. So I come for both of them, and then I get uh, completely captivated by all of you here, all the role players. Well done today. I thoroughly enjoyed today's meeting, along with all the speeches, the evaluation, especially sort of these evaluations. And also the table topics. I love the topic. Right? And uh, I always say till the end of the meeting, somehow you guys captivate me. So I say till the end. So thank you so much for a wonderful experience. Back to you, Madam President. Thank you so much, Toastmaster Noor. It's always a pleasure to have you in our meetings. We find it quite encouraging when you participate with your jokes, with your humor. Your sense of humor is impeccable. Um, I must, what do I even say about Sudharma? I don't know how she persuades people, but Sudharma, whatever you're doing, just keep on doing uh, with this. I'm sure everyone is happy taking up roles. It's never a problem that we <clears throat> don't have role takers or guests in our meeting. So uh, kudos to you, Sudharma, and thank you so much, Toastmaster Noor. Last but not the least, I would like to hear it from um, Toastmaster Ilios. It's always a pleasure to have you amongst us. Toastmaster Ilios, a quick 30 second feedback. Am I audible? Yes, you are, but Ilias is not me. On the audio. Sure. Okay. All yeah. right. In that case, we can hear it from Postmaster uh, Ilias later over chat for any feedback you might have. 
I would like to take this opportunity to quickly share the poll results. Poll results are ready as uh, announced previously that we'll not have best speaker and best evaluator poll since we had only single speaker and single evaluator today, but we have got the auxiliary role taker polls, poll results with me and the best tagger team role taker for today's meeting goes to Toastmaster Sri Lakshmi Hegare. Congratulations Toastmaster Sri Lakshmi. Next, for best table topic speech, we have, okay, there were quite a number of speakers we had uh, today participating in table topics and the best table topic speech goes to distinguished Toastmaster Saurabh Tatta. Congratulations, DTM Saurabh. Last but not the least, for the best main role taker, we had three amazing role takers taking up for three key roles of the meeting. Uh, the team mod, Toastmaster Manikandan, picking up this role for the very first time. We had Toastmaster Pani, the seasoned Toastmaster, uh, as table topic master and distinguished Toastmaster Saurabh Datta as general evaluator. And the best, the best main role taker award for today's meeting goes to distinguished Toastmaster Saurav Datta. Congratulations, TKM Saurav, once again. With this, uh, I would like to make one quick announcement for the division contest, upcoming division contest uh, this Saturday. I would request all the members of the Gabbies and uh, all our guests to come and participate in the division contest. It's on 27th April. Uh, whether you join online or in person, that's your choice. We have got nine out of 24 participants participating from the Gabbies at the Division B contest, District 92. We would, we would love to have you all encouraging all our participants there in the Division contest. With this, I adjourn meeting number 44 of the Gabbies Online Toastmasters Club. Have a great evening, everyone. Bye-bye. Thank Bye. you. Bye-bye. Good night. Thank you so much. Goodbye. Peace, Bye.